Tuesday show. How are you today? I'm Brandon Dempsey and great to have you. You can see we have our guest right here, Shakara Monique, and we're going to be getting to her in a second. How are you guys today? Let's go ahead and have everybody come on in. Thanks so much for coming. We have some great friends. Josh, what's up on Periscope? Josh, my good friend. We've been uh, back and forth with each other on Instagram. Great photographer of worship and does a lot of great things. you got to follow him. Josh Lick. What's up, Josh? And uh, everybody else following us on Periscope, thanks for, so much for coming in. Also, Facebook Live, what is going on? Happy Tuesday. Happy first day of the summer, right? Hope that you guys are making a great start to your week. I know that we are right here at Worship Team Training, and it's great to have you. Hi, my name is Brandon Dempsey, and I am a follower of Jesus, and happen to lead a ministry called WorshipTeamTraining.com, and also Worship Team Training University. You can find more of what we do at our websites, and also WTTU. Dot co. That is the university website. What's up, Josh? And uh, all of you guys that are uh, taken into the uh, broadcast that we do each and every week, thanks so much for coming in. We broadcast just like this on, on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Central Standard uh, by both Facebook Live and Periscope and also by iTunes and Spreaker, which is our audio playback podcast. And we glad, we're so glad that you guys are here. What do we do? We do exactly what we say, worship team training. We help train worship teams and their practicality of skill within their musicianship, their, if they're a vocalist, if they're a worship leader, sound tech, engineer, uh, visual, and also with senior pastors. We, we work with a lot of churches each and every year. We have a lot of churches that are coming up through our workshops right now. And if you want to look at more of what we do, you can simply find those workshops at worshipteentraining.com slash workshops. And also be sure to cruise by and see WTTU.co, our university site. So uh, we are about to go. Just want to give you guys a heads up of what's coming. Uh, man, we got a big, big week uh, to kick off the summer. We can't believe it. And uh, we're so glad that you guys are here just so that you can see it all and that you can experience uh, what is going on. Uh, first up, if you're not following us on Snapchat, you need to. Why? Because we put out exclusive content there that you will not see anywhere else on our sites and it's also a great way to message us message me let us know what's going on with you and your crew if you got a question about your worship team uh, we get snaps day in and day out from you guys you let us know uh, what's been going on with like things within your team uh, within your staff and uh, some of them are funny some of them are very serious and we pray for you so we we say thank you so much for coming by uh, we also have our song our worship songwriting contest is closed it closed over the weekend and we just want to say a big shout out and thank you guys for participating. We have our entries already selected and we are excited to bring you the news this coming Friday at 11 a.m. Central to announce the winner. And if you didn't get a chance to get in your submission, don't worry because we have another awesome worship songwriting contest coming up. So what else is coming up? Man, before it gets to Friday, Thursday has to happen. And let me just tell you, our next guest this coming week is going to blow the doors off of the house. And I can't wait. Our good friend Paul Balash is coming this Thursday. You cannot miss that. We're going to have a lot of fun uh, with Paul and to talk about the latest things that what he's doing and also uh, to hear his heart. Uh, fantastic insight on worship. And uh, it, it's just going to be a, a great treat. So you got to be sure to be with us there. I've given you the link. And in order for you to join us, you have to sign up to become a member at WTTU.co. So this is for all of our members. And this is one of the great benefits that you get in becoming a Worship Team Training University member. Guys like Paul Balash, Crystal Lewis, who is on, Carl Albrecht, Tim Carson, Dwayne Moore. We have a lot of great people also lined up coming uh, Tim Carson's coming next week as well, going to be doing some vocal stuff. So if you want more, you want in on the action, sign up at WTTU.co, and we thank you so much. Let's get right to it. Shakar Williams, uh, just fantastic. We have been talking uh, back and forth uh, through Instagram and Periscope and Snapchat, and she's been letting us know um, all of what's going on within her worship team. And finally, we get to have her today and so what I want to do also is give you guys on Facebook Live and Periscope um, if you're following us on our Twitter by the way you get to see this week's show post and uh, I'm giving that out there right to you right now so you got the links with you Shakira Monique is a worship leader over at Grace Church in Dumfries Virginia 
The church is about a thousand or so, and she sings. She's a great singer. She's been leading worship for 20 years and also writing music. We've been talking about that as well, so more of that to come. Without any further ado, everybody, please welcome Shakira Monique. How are you, Shakira? I'm great. Awesome. It's so great to have um, you. How are you this morning? I'm excited. Um, <laughs> first, before we get started, yeah. I'm not a worship leader at Grace Church yet. I've only been there for like a couple of months. Okay. So, okay. Well, yeah, and you, we have to go through, you know, the initiation process of, you know, becoming members and things like that. So once we get through all that, and then I will, you know, I guess go through whatever the process is to join the worship team. But there you go. I have let them know that I am interested. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I signed you up a bit too early, but so, but you've been singing and you've been leading worship for twenty years. So yes, yes. All right, awesome. So tell us about your new church. Tell us maybe the church that you came from. Um, where, where you're from, Dumfries, Virginia. Go. I'm from I'm from Fredericksburg. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Okay, awesome. that's that's where um, I was born and raised. I ended up in uh, Virginia by way of the military. I joined the Marine Corps in uh, 2001. Oh my and, goodness! Um, Hats off to you. Thank you so much for serving our country. Thank you. Love and, it. Um, so once I got out, um, my last duty station was in Virginia, Quantico, Virginia, and I didn't want to go back to cold, cold Michigan, so yeah. I decided to stay in Virginia. Um, the last church I was at before uh, Grace Church, where I served as uh, a worship leader, was, um, I really don't want to say the name of the church, because okay. I left under uh, different terms, so I don't want to say the name of the church. So um, where you're at So where you're at right now, talk about that. You're... It's... Uh, we were looking for um, just a church where we felt that like there was no um, compromising um, as far as, um, you know, trying to please uh, people rather than pe pleasing God. Sure. Um, and so um, we went, we visited Grace for uh, um, a couple of weeks, and then um, there was a message um that um, the pastor preached, and my husband sort of squeezed my hand and looked at me like, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm ready. I, I think this is where we're supposed to be. And so we felt it at the same time, like, okay, this, you know, we like to um, go to places that are free to worship, um, that there's no hindrance. You know, I know that we have now where we're trying to get everybody in and out, especially if you have uh, several services going on that you know that day you want to get everybody in and out but we just want to be at a place where you're, we're just free to let the Holy Spirit just move and we saw that there mm -hmm. and, and that's what, what draws to Grace Church so that's where we are right now. Excellent that's so good and so you started like, like you've been doing this for 20 years but how did God call you into leading worship because we have a lot of people that watch that Maybe they just began leading worship a year ago, five years, 20, so forth. So how were you called into leading worship? Well, for me, my parents are uh, worship leaders. And my oh, wow. father, it seems wherever we went to church, my father always ended up being the, uh, the MD for, for that church, the, the, the minister of music for that church. Yeah. And he's a bass player. Okay. And uh, my mother's a vocalist. And so, of course, we're there. We, I have seven sisters. Um, wow. Four of us, yeah. <laughs> four of us lived at home, and so, of course, you know, we were in the choirs, we were in the groups, we we were anything that had music involved. My parents had us in it. So, since my father was the minister of music, we were always on the praise teams, and um, my mother would teach us vocals and and teach us the importance of um, worship and why we do what we do. So at a very young age, my mother just instilled in us the importance of, of, of worship and why we do it and doing it with excellence. And so we've been doing it for a long time. So it was my parents that initially kind of forced us into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, moms and dads are good at you know encouragement and moving us into the right way. So that's, yeah. that's awesome to hear about your background. And you also write music too, so tell us a little bit about that. Yes, um, even as a child, um, I wrote my first song, my, my parents tell me I wrote my first song at three years old. 
Um, <laughs> uh, my father, he was working on a, a music track, and I kept begging him to sing. And he, you know, he's pushing me away. You know, I'm working. And I just kept begging him and begging him. So he just gave me the microphone. And my mom said, I just made up the song on top of my head, like with the track, even with oh, the wow. changes, went to the bridge and everything just right off the top of my head. And so um, I've been, um, I used to keep notebooks of songs hmm. that, and I would just write and, and whatever came to my heart. And I still have those notebooks, you know, the pages are ripped out, but I still have some of those notebooks to this day. Um, just, I just write, you know, from life experiences and, and my journey and my walk through Christ and just, just uh, whatever God puts on my heart. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So uh, within the past 20 years of, of leading worship, what are some of the things that you have seen change? Maybe you have seen things that have changed for the better within leading worship? Um, change for the better, I think, um, for me, it's incorporating all, um, not necessarily that, that love the hymns and, and they, they love the, the, you know, young generation who like the, the hill song, you know, in the, in the, find a way to bridge um, all the generations together so that we can all worship together. I, I especially love songs where they, you know, it's a new song, but then they tag like a hymn on the end of yeah. it. I love when they do that because mm. it just really brings everyone together. Mm. Oh, I love that too. Great word. You know, there, there's been so many uh, shifts in the way that we do music in terms of their style, like what you said, tagging on the last hymn. Uh, the new awesome versions that are out now. Uh, musically, I think that things have gotten a lot better, uh, but there's still some things that remain the same. So when we talk about worship and we talk about the purpose and the reason of worship, that seems to be something that is timeless. What's your yeah. thought on that? Well, I mean, worship to me, that's, that's like your, to, to me it's like my most honest and purest, um, connection that's where I feel most closer to him most closest to him mm -hmm. and that's the time when you're you know you're most pure you're most honest you're most earnest to seek him and I, I don't think that will that will ever change because um, we're seeking to to get closer to him to have a closer relation to uh, relationship with him that's mm -hmm. that's what we want so you know worship to me is like my quickest way to, to you know get close to him when I have my own personal prayer time and and I'm just you know I'm singing and, and I'm worshiping is to draw close to him mm -hmm. and just to feel his presence so yeah love that so when we um, when we lead worship uh, there's always those out in the church I mean like you know there were those even this past Sunday that there's a few that you notice around the room that are just not singing, right? Yes. And, and then you know the ones you know the ones that are, and and you're thinking every every kind of thought could just be going through your head at that moment. Um, yeah. So what is it like? I mean, if when you find people that are not engaging in worship, um, what do you do? Um, I have several things I do sometimes. Um, I would look if I see someone. Sometimes I would look at that person. And I would smile and I would sing to them, you know, to try and get them to, you know, engage and to join in. Um, sometimes if some of those faces is just like they don't want to be bothered, then I just sort of just look in the direction of someone who is engaged, you yeah. know. But for the most part, um, when I go into worship, I I'm going to worship because that's who I am. And I can't be distracted by, you know, those who, you know, you know, everyone worships in their own way. My husband, he, sometimes, you know, he raises his hand and sometimes he just sits there, he just stands there with his eyes closed and his hands in his pocket, but it doesn't mean that he's not engaged. So I try not to, to judge the person and, you know, if they're not doing what I think they should do, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not touched. It doesn't mean that, you know, they're not engaged. 
Um, but I have to just continue doing what it is that, that I've been called to do. And, you know, I think, you know, we're an example, we're a guide, you know, but everyone worships in their own different way. It doesn't all look the same. So I try not to get too distracted by that. Hmm. I love that. What, um, it's true because worship doesn't depend on us. Mm -hmm. It depends on the Holy Spirit. So yeah. what are some of the other challenges that you've seen within worship leaders? Um, let me see. Uh, I think um, just finding, I know for me, just finding the right songs. You know, you want, you yeah. want the songs to um, be timely. You want the songs to coincide with what uh, the pastor is preaching, you know, on that day. You know, so you don't want, just want to, you know, pick three songs and put them together, like two fast songs, one slow song. You know, you know it, it has to flow, you know. And so I generally, um, when I pick, um, pick songs, I, you know, I pray about it. I allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead me. And I just, I listen to the songs and, and I listen to the flow of the songs and, it has to be right. It just can't be a bunch of songs that you just heard on the radio that you thought was cool. So you know we're go we're gonna we're gonna do these songs because that's what's hot right now. It has to be right for that house. It has to be right for that moment. Hmm. So you know, and that that's just that's the time where you need to pray and, and seek God and seek the Holy Spirit just to make sure that you know you're not doing what you think is cool, but we're doing what what God wants to hear at that time. Wow, I I love that because when we lead worship. It, it's so important to know who our people are. It, it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with, with what we do, but it's like what you said, it's really where the people are. Um, so what does it mean to you when we say that, you know, worship, uh, to live is to worship? What, what meaning does that have for you? Oh, because everything we do, we, we do unto him. So like Amen. our daily life, you know, we should always be an example. When you go to your, your regular job and when, when you out and just at the grocery store, there should somebody should look at you and say, there, there's something about that person. We should always incorporate worship in our daily life, whether it's um, worshiping through music or just praying daily. I pray on my way back and forth to work. And sometimes I'm walking and I'm talking, I'm like, and I say to myself, okay, folks are going to think you're crazy because I have this bad habit of actually speaking out. Sure. And I was like, okay, people are going to think you're crazy. But, you know, it's that, that daily communication with him, you know, on a daily basis is, is constantly, you know, just talking to him and, and having that connection with him. And that's just, that's what he wants. He wants that relationship, and, and it requires communication with him hmm. through worship, through prayer. Yeah. Through, yeah. So in, in doing music aside, what do you think is the number one thing that, um, like for you, what, what helps you before you lead worship? Prayer. Um, prayer and um, sometimes uh, fasting. Um, just so that I'm focused mm -hmm. on what I'm supposed to be focused on and there's no distractions. I, I have um, this little room that I'm in right now is where I like to go in and pray alone away from the kids and the husband and everything where I have that alone time with him and I can be, you know, focused on him and him only. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it starts at home. If you're not worshiping at home, it's, it's, it's a little harder to come and turn it on on Sunday, if you haven't done it at home already, yeah, you know, yeah. So, what gets you through when you're having? I mean, let's say the the Sunday's not working, you know, mm -hmm. or what, or whatever day it is that you're leading worship. Think back at the time when you were leading worship. It's probably right there. You're probably already thinking about it. <laughs> you know, something else was just going array, going wrong. Whatever it could be, how? Did God bring you through it, and what did you learn from it? Um, you just have to to get past your yourself, you know mm. that, um, and keep. You have to keep, like I said, you have to keep focused on Him. Um, there's a lot of things that can get in your way. It, it could, and it could be the silliest things, like you know, the the outfit you picked didn't work out, or you know, 
your hair didn't work out today. So it's the craziest <laughs> things that would distract you from your focus and your goal. And so you have to, you know, get out of yourself and remember that, you know, the goal is is to be, you know, God focused and to, to keep upward. So I just try and, you know, pray and be like, okay, God, I'm, I'm distracted today, but, you know, I, I need you, you know, just to, to lead me and to, and to guide me and just stay focused on him. Yeah, that seems to be the theme of uh, yeah. <laughs> every time that we lead worship. But it, there's, we get distracted. I mean, th- we yeah. we get bamboozled of you know setup or something's not right in the mix or like what you said earlier, there could be somebody in the congregation that is just not worshiping, and, and yeah. you may think, well, is it me? And a lot of worship leaders. You know, walk away. I mean, we're all subject to it. I mean, myself oh, included. Yeah. We all walk yeah. away, and we're like wondering, man, did did I did I really let God use me? That I was, was it, instead of you know, was it the best that I've done? I mean, there's a. Yeah. Can you talk about that difference? Um, there there are times where I felt like, okay, that was me, and mm-hmm. you know, I go back and I think about, okay. Did I, could I have picked a different song? Could I have, you know, there, there was one time I picked a song that um, we saw before and it went beautifully. And then the next time we sung it, it was, it was a train wreck. The, the MV started it in a totally different key and the singers couldn't pick up on the key. And it was, it just, it crashed and burned. And, <laughs> And I was like, oh, my gosh, what happened, you know? And I was, like, trying to figure it out, and the pastor's looking at me like, what happened? Uh, you know, he you had know to it's, come and, You know it's bad when the pastor looks at you. Yes, <laughs> you know, and so it made him have to work because then he had to come and sing another song and try and get everybody back in focus. So, yeah, when I went home that day, I was like, oh, wow, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> So it happens, yeah. you know, and, you know, it's, it's not going to be a perfect, you know, perfect Sunday all the time. You know, there's going to be some days where it's just going to be like, wow, that was, that was not it. So, you, but, yeah. But you just have to keep moving forward. You you learn from it and you say, okay, we're not going to do that song for a while. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you know, find something else. Well, at least not that key. We're not doing yeah, that. Key yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I think there's a degree that we as worship leaders, musicians, singers, audio tech, that you know we can't take ourselves too seriously, mm-hmm. or or the work, the the leading that's before us, we can't take that too seriously. What's that like for you? Does it feel good just to laugh? You know when? Oh yeah. Yeah. I love it. I mean, for me, when I first started. I was so nervous about because I was used to singing with my sisters. I always had my sisters with me. And Seven. once I went to Virginia, you know, it was just me. Um, so I, I got kind of nervous, you know, and I, I prayed to God and I, you know, I said, okay, so how am I supposed to do this? And he told me to just be myself. So like when I first started, when I would go out to sing and minister, my way of getting comfortable is to make the audience comfortable. And I would usually say something like funny. You know, just to break the ice, because when they don't know you, they're looking at you like, okay, let's let's see what she's gonna, you know, yeah. what she's gonna sing, what she's gonna do. And so I, I usually try and break the ice with humor, and that's that makes me comfortable and more free to to do what it is that I'm called to do, rather than try. Because I used to try and emulate other people and try and you know remember the scriptures and 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 you know just try and be like more serious. But every time I did that, I ended up, you know, mm. just screwing it up. So I had to be myself. God told me, he said, you have to be who you are, who I created you to be. So yeah. it's a lot easier now when I'm just being me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. It's, it's real, it really is just about being you. It's not about being anybody else because God didn't call anybody else to lead worship. He called you. Yeah. And if you can't make that your own and you're trying so hard to be like somebody else, you're not being the way God's designed you to be. Uh, yeah. But it sounds like you, Shakara, has, I mean, over these years, it sounds like God has been doing a lot of breakthroughs in your life to yes. make that real to you. Oh, yeah. I've, I've gone through so much. So, especially the last few years. Um, and I think 
it's helped me a lot as far as praise and worship, just to be more, um, more bold and more freeing to, to share my testimonies and to share just the things that God has, you know, um, done in my life. And, um, I'm just grateful, you know, sometimes um, when I first started writing, I felt like my songs were just kind of generic, especially when you're young, because you really haven't been through a lot of things. Um, so I felt they were just, you know, kind of generic songs. But once I started to live life and go through things, you know, the songs that God would put in my life, my mother, she told me, she's like, you need to go listen to your songs because the songs that God gave to you, they are for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you get it, then you can take that song and you can minister it to somebody else. Yes. But he's ministering that song to you. That song, that healing song was for you to, to heal you, to, to, to lift you up, you know. And so I never thought about it that way, you know. Hmm. And once I, I went back and I listened to the songs, I was like, wow, because, you know, I can think of the time where I was going through something and, and that song brought me out of that. So it's just it's a growing process yeah. <laughs> and so I'm always evolving it and so I just I just follow him I love that wherever it is he leads me. so it's it's not a set list process where I got to get it right next week I got to accomplish a B and C it's it's a life process like what you said oh no it's, it's never a set list as I mean sometimes you know God will change things up. I will get to a place where I'm getting ready to sing and I'll have a list in mind of, you know, what I'm going to sing. And the Holy Spirit will come in and just totally change it. I, I, I changed a song right when I got to the mic one time because wow. I just felt God saying, you know, no, that's not what I want. You know, and I, at first I was scared. I was like, am I really going to change this song right now? Like right here? But I had to follow the Holy Spirit, and I and he he did what he needed to do, so it was the right decision. Hmm. I hate to see what happened if I didn't hit you. <laughs> if I didn't change the song, I'm sure all eyes in the band and the audio are watching you too. They're like, oh uh, yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm changing the song. And they're like, exactly. what? yeah. There's there's that block of time where the world stands still. You know, right? Yeah, that's good. Well, uh, Shakara, Monique, uh, everybody from Dumfries, Virginia, and she's, uh, she's on today. Thanks so much, Shakara, for being with us and sharing your heart. Oh, thanks for having me. It's been awesome, and I, I look forward. We're going to have you back. Uh, Shakara is such a sweet lady. She's been following us, and uh, we've been writing back and forth to each other. And yeah. you also got her book today, so um, my book, so thanks so much for that. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. And so we're going to check it out. Well, thank you for that. And, and guys, if you want to check out the same thing that Shakara has, you can find us at WTTU.co. And also, do you feel like maybe that the worship where you're leading, maybe you are stuck. Maybe you feel like you are going from set list to set list each week. Well, we have something for you that will help, and that is called our Worship Team Training Workshops. And you can find that at worshipteentraining.com slash workshops because what we found is shared information from team to team, leader to leader. You find out what works for you, that's great. But have you taken that extra step to really be encouraged, to really have practical hands-on training for your team, with your vocalists, with your band members, but also to have a friend just come along beside you and say, hey, have you thought about trying it this way? Just like what Shakara was saying, it's not about the music. It's, it's about the songs that people need to hear because God gave them to you because then what's awesome about it is that it becomes their song. It becomes their message, their praise to God. Don't you want that? If you do, sign up at worshipingtraining.com slash workshops and also our university links, wttu.co that you see right there. So Shakara, thanks so much for being with us today. We love it. Thank you. So much fun. It was awesome. It is a lot of fun. And uh, we can't wait to see you guys back at WorstTeenTraining.com and also WTTU.co. Don't forget this coming Thursday, Paul Balash will be with us in this seat right here. I, well, not this seat, but in another seat, same screen. And we're going to be hearing from his heart and what God is doing in his life right now and the many, many impacts that God has used him uh, to make upon all of our lives in the church. Uh, also, be sure to check out 
Tim Carson coming up the following week and a special webinar by Tim Carson with vocal artistry. We have a lot of things coming your way. All you need to do is go to wttu.co slash events and look at what's coming. We can't wait to be with you this coming Thursday. And also, so you got to sign up to be a member to watch. And of course, if you are interested in coming to our next Tuesday show, then hey, join us for that next Tuesday at 11 a.m. We can't wait to see you there. So may God blessings flow to you and your team. We love you, and we'll see you very soon. Bye.